The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This is Talking Cowboys. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys Training Camp in Oxnard, California. First down. Hand off, Elliott plowing to the goal line. Barry, sacked by Lord. Prescott keeps it, and he bangs it in for the touchdown. And now your hosts, Mickey Spagnola, Rob Phillips, and Kyle Yeomans. It is a Tuesday edition of Talking Cowboys presented by Black Rifle <laughs> Black what, Rifle what show Coffee are you Company. Doing He's doing so many oh shows. Oh my gosh, guys, you have no idea. No, and it's I'm day <laughs> 47 of training camp. <laughs> I, it's honestly a wonder that I haven't done it to this point, but it is Talking Cowboys. That is the show that we are on, and it is presented <laughs> by Black Rifle Coffee Company. How about that? Hey, everybody. At least you didn't do it like I did on a, <laughs> on a closing out show. a live pregame show. That one I'll have notes for. Thank and goodness. Thank you for joining us on <laughs> Talking Cow. Um, <laughs> and Nate oh, goes, oh. Nate goes, oh, you just do too many. Uh, it's, it's fine. He it's pulled fine. me out of the ditch. He figured it out. The, Nate, the, Nate has a tendency to do that. The fans know. They know how much we put out, and they appreciate it, I think. I hope, I hope so. So if we mess up a couple times, it is what <laughs> it well, is. Well, one of the guys in the, in the breakfast room this morning, one of the workers here, he, uh, he said, so how many subscribers do you have on that YouTube channel? Mm. And I said, oh, you just asked the wrong person. You I got a YouTube channel. No, no. You oh, meant Cowboys. Oh, okay. Cowboys. And yeah. he watches all our stuff. And he wanted to know. And I said, yeah, you, you, you asked the wrong person. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how many are on there. <laughs> but just keep watching. Yeah, that, that's the, the big point of all this. Is so we do have a YouTube channel, trying. right? <laughs> yes, yes, we do. Yeah, that, you're, you're on point with that one. Good job, Mick. Uh, Mickey Spagnola, Rob Phillips, Kyle Yeomans, Chris Beam in the back as always. No Isaiah stand back today. He is back in Dallas prepping to get ready for the Denver Broncos because he'll be on the TV broadcast coming up on Saturday. It is officially preseason game week, Rob, and there's a lot of news and notes around the Cowboys early on, and uh, including something that's unfolding at the moment. Yes, we may have a new kicker in here. We may Ooh. not, but we do have four kickers scheduled to try out right now uh, in Oxnard as the Cowboys looking for possible contingencies, maybe a replacement. We'll see what they decide to do. Maybe they're just quote-unquote kicking tires, Mick, but they've got four guys in here to work out and a couple, at least one familiar face. Brett Maher, who was the former kicker here a couple years back. Matt Amendola, who I want to say worked out here in the past. I, I'm I tried to double-check that. I'm not 100% sure on that one. J.J. Molson and Cole Murphy. Mm-hmm. And Maher, by far, has the most experience of the four. Cowboys just looking for maybe some, some, some more options in camp for Jonathan Garibay and Liram Hirolahu. And how lucky for these four, because as they were warming up, there's absolutely no wind coming out <laughs> of the west, right? They're just booming some things off the little artificial, or not um, artificial, um, the little holder, whatever you call it. I can see the goalpost from here, and I'm not seeing the little orange They're thing. They're just move not much. moving. Yeah, no and gusts. you know how I tried to explain and got brutalized by Nate and Isaiah <laughs> for saying there's a, the, the there's, wind. A, there's a space in between the trees, the trees. and it creates a wind tunnel? There's nothing for those guys. They're just booming away. Didn't so they cut the trees? There's a tree stump <laughs> down there, so they cut a tree they down. Cut the it tree must down? have died or something. Oh, yeah. No. Mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah. all those trees block some of the wind, but in the middle, it, it kind of goes flying through. So we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, I'm sure they're kicking tires, and I'm sure, you know, before Garibay had his best day yesterday going mm-hmm. six of eight, um, that they had already arranged for these guys to come in. And uh, and then uh, Liram goes 8 of 8, and so I don't know if they knew these guys were coming in and they buckled down or what, but uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. And I would imagine they either – Bring in another guy, or they cut Garibay and challenge Hyrulahu with uh, somebody else. So Hyrulahu has been the more consistent guy so Easily. far through two weeks. Yeah, he w- he hasn't had ultra consistency, but yeah. he's been better, and he's had a few good days in a row here. Here's the unofficial tally according to Todd Archer, who charts. Yeah, I was gonna. I just wrote it down, but go ahead. You found it faster. Hyrulahu, Hi- forty-two of fifty-six in practice so far. 
Okay. Jonathan Garibay, the rookie out of Texas Tech, 34 of 57. And like Mick said, yesterday was his best day. Six of eight, and they both made a last-second kick in some you know, situational two-minute work yesterday. So obviously they're looking for more consistency. And, and look, there, there could be other guys that pop up after final cuts. It yeah. doesn't hurt to look right now, though. What did you say Ira Lahu had? 42 of 56, No, right? that can't be right. He hasn't missed 16 kicks. Todd, you hear that? Mickey's calling you out. <laughs> He's I good. wrote down 52 of 59, and four of those misses were in one day when he went four of eight. So maybe I missed some kicks. I mean, either way, you're looking at <laughs> about – Chris got yeah, percentages? Chris, Chris got percentages? I, I see the calculator Garibay. app. It's 59%. Eh, you could round up to 60% if you really wanted to with Garibay. But then Garibay based was off of 33 of 60. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's the 60%. guy that's – 50% probably. Mm. Oof. Mm. And then uh, 75% for Hyber Lahu. So either way, it's not great. It's not ultimately a an easy situation to sort through because you want Garibay to be one of those guys that could develop. He's got the leg. He's got an NFL leg. Don't get me wrong. It's the accuracy that's the, the inconsistent part of it. He's going to boot the football, but you just don't know necessarily where it's going to end up. Is that something that you have time to develop, though? I think it's a mental thing with him. You think so? I really do. I think it got in his head, mm -hmm. and he couldn't clear it because he was really kicking well in the OTAs and the mini camps that we got a chance to watch. Sure. Well, we saw him once. I know, but there were one other, time it was without goalposts. There were yeah. other there were <laughs> other kicks going on. I know, but when yeah, I talked to sure. somebody, and he's got a he's probably got the better leg. Uh, he got out here, and he he needs a mental coach. And I don't know if somebody settled him down um, yesterday. Yesterday, when he went uh, six of eight, and 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 the, the good thing was he finally made one. On the it wasn't a mojo moment, but it was at the end of end a of two practice. minute drill, end of practice, mm -hmm. where it was to win a game, and he hit from forty eight and solid right down the middle. So that's one of those things where you go, okay, I've seen this. Can I just get it consistently? You know, and maybe you don't want to give up on him. You know, maybe he's a practice squad guy. I read where, uh, which guy was it? Um, one of the four guys. One of those four guys uh, ended up on the, on the Packers practice squad for a year and a half, and they kept him uh, for COVID reasons. I think, like it, I think it was J.J. JJ Molson. Molson, yeah. yeah. Uh, just in case something happened to Crosby, um, they said we'll have a kicker on the 16-man I mean, roster. And, and that's where he basically got to kick, I think, in one preseason game, and that was it. You've yeah. got 16 spots, so there's room to, to keep an extra kicker if you want to. In fact, yeah. they did it last year with Hyrule Lahu when Greg Zerline was coming back from his injury slash struggling after the Bucks game in week one. And, you know, the life of a kicker, man, it, it's it's a carousel. Like, no doubt. Like Matt Amendola was with the Jets and I think went 13 of 19 last season. Yes. Greg Zerline's out in Dallas. He goes to the Jets. The Jets cut Amendola. Now he's trying out here. Brett Maher was here. He went to – he was with the Jets previously. He actually, you know, for – the struggles that he had with, with shorter distances with the Cowboys, he was pretty good with the Saints last year, 16 of 18. Yeah, so, so he kicked well with the Saints, but w what does it tell you that they didn't keep him, right? Well, it was it's also like only – on. Yeah, it was only a, a long of 42. He didn't yeah. stretch the field a whole lot. They only kicked underneath 45 yards the significant amount of time. So And this Molson guy at UCLA, I saw where he was 51 of 74 over his career. Hmm. That's – kind of scary Cole Murphy it was a USFL guy so maybe they can strike gold like, two-time you know, like uh, special hope, teams player of the week hoping like Turpin with uh at the receiver position so you it, guys you know. are not doing a good job of selling this for me I'm, I'm I'm relying on you guys to give me some of this Murphy, insight and to make me feel better if one of these guys is our kicker in six games <laughs> with the Michigan Panthers sorry. uh Michigan Panthers Murphy was 11 of 12 92 percent with a long of 60 with the Michigan Panthers Michigan Panthers what a squad. and he also kicked for the San Diego fleet of the AAF hey how about that so fun facts yeah how about American that football. what other facts you want <laughs> So you, I mean, I know if there's going to be a good kicker on the only, roster. The, the, the only problem was when he was at Syracuse, he only made 71 percent and had four kicks blocked. Yep, yep. See, there you go again. Just not making sorry me feel any better. About well, that's this. why they're out there, right? So, would you be comfortable if you signed one of these guys? 
do you think that solves a problem if one of these? No, guys it doesn't comes in? solve a problem. It just creates more competition for High Rilahu, That's all to me. Are I we, don't think yeah, they'll think, keep three of I think, them. I think you keep looking, especially depending on how the rest of preseason goes. Yeah. Um, you know, Maher has experience. Amendola has a little bit of experience. The other two guys don't. So, you know, there could be better options coming after training camp ends and after final cuts happen. But for now, yeah, I think you just got to create more competition potentially. Here's you know? what you didn't like about Amendola when, when, he, when he kicked those 11 games for um, – Last year for the Jets, he was 2 of 5 from 40 to 49 and 0 of 3, 50-plus. So 2 of 8 from 40 yards and further. Okay. So not that's good. not real. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's no. why he's available, not, not right? great, Bob. Yeah. But that's what's out there. there there's there's it, The best opportunity they might have is when you cut the roster to 53 and yeah. guys that – teams that have two kickers that they're holding on to – Somebody's going to get released. Sure. So even the Jets, right? So with that, do you just keep with the two guys that you want? Because my thing is, is are we sure it's Garibay that's on the short end of the stick? Because, yes, Hyralahu has been the more consistent, the more impressive kicker out of the two of them in camp so far. But Garibay is a developmental project. If right. He's still a I rookie, agree with he's you. He's got a massive leg. He's not necessarily a foregone conclusion that he's the cut moving right. forward. Yeah, I, that's a great point. I would say, though, that Hyra Lahu is a favorite of, of Bones Fossil, though, too. I okay. mean, he, there's a reason he's been here four different times and when they need a kicker in a, in a pinch. Yeah, and I would almost say he's developmental. He's older, but he hasn't kicked much in the NFL, hardly any. He's sure. been He's been a CFL guy. And I'm sure they feel like there's something they can unlock with him, too. He doesn't and he have as big of a leg, though, as Garibay does. No, I don't think so. Just no, from but watching. Now, yeah, he that's was not in, always the most important thing, either. He was I mean, in we've, a seen, kick, okay. we've seen kickers with big legs in here before. He was in a <laughs> kicking competition last summer with the Rams. And yeah. from what I read, it was almost a dead heat. And they decided to keep, is it gay? Yes. Yeah. They decide to keep him. Now he's uh, gone too. Though. You know, Jerry brought up a point after practice the other day that you know basically let's let's focus on making these thirty-two yarders. And what he's talking about is the extra points. I yeah. mean, those yeah. aren't those aren't he in the NFL anymore either. Is good. Yeah. So I mean, they, the biggest some of the biggest problems they've had going back to Maher four years ago, going back to Zerline last year. I'm talking like thirty-five to forty-nine. Like yeah. that's been the automatic layups that not, should be good the, every min, time. the no. money kicks. Those are those the are money, money kicks. Ki- exactly, right? that's what those are. And you got and you and you want to make you know at least ninety percent of those. Sure. You know, and if your misses are from fifty, okay, you know, tell the offense to play better. So, with that being said, I mean, I'm looking at uh, Brent Maher's numbers last year with the Saints. I mean, that's kind of what he did. I mean, outside of fifty yards, he was zero of one. Inside of 51, he was 16 of 17. Right. That's what you would need. That's yeah. what you're asking for in a kicker specifically. So maybe – Maybe he's found something. You bring something back with him. Yeah. You don't You don't try it. I mean, like you said, the offense has got to be better to a certain extent, get closer. But maybe you don't stretch it as much and go with these long field goals. Or I mean, that's kind of the thing, though, is when do you know when to and when not to go and kick a field goal based on your kicker? You want the bigger leg because it gives you an opportunity right. to get more points. And you don't want that in the back of your head when you're Absolutely. the head coach going, okay, do I try a 52 or do we go <laughs> for it on fourth down, which is the higher percentage, right? Yeah. And that shouldn't enter into your mind. You should say, okay, go out and kick it, right? Yeah. And but I can but I can go all the way back to David Beeler about 10 years ago. <laughs> Huge leg, was a kickoff specialist for a while, but he couldn't. He, great guy, but he couldn't stick in the league because he wasn't consistent enough on, on the money kicks. Yeah. yeah, and he could get it there, but uh, you're right on the money kicks. The other thing with uh, I noticed with Amendola, while he was 14 of 15 on extra points, he had 47 kickoffs and only 27 touchbacks. So not a strong leg to get it out so of the end zone. Either that or not, you know, you don't get enough hang time, and they sure. even if it's in the end zone, they got time to bring it back. Good point. So that always factors into it also. Yeah. 
Rob, real quickly before we take our first break, read off the four names that are trying out again, just for those that at home may have missed them in the earlier parts of the podcast. Read these four names off because one of them very well be could be on the roster by the next time we record this show. Sure thing, Kyle. Thanks, Bre- man. Brett Maher, Matt Amendola, J.J. Molson, and Cole Murphy, most recently of the USFL. At least Molson could hook him up with a beer deal. A beer deal? Why? Eighth generation descendant of John Molson, the founder of Molson Brewery. No way. Really? Wow. That name, it, that jumped out at me when I saw the yeah. name, but I didn't think. You it. didn't he, know why. He, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was born in Montreal. Wow. He is Canadian. He's yeah. Canadian. Yeah. Interesting. You know hey, how about that? How about that <laughs> fact you get? How about that, hey? All right. When we come back here on Talking Cowboys, let's talk a little bit about Jaron Curse. Is there anything to worry about with his injury? He had some back tightness in practice yesterday, and then also the CD Lamb to Dak connection. Oh, it has been clicking in Oxnard. Plenty more to come on the other side of the break here on Talking Cowboys. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable, and now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. <laughs> But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. The Cowboys way. Where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. This sweet! Did you get to work on time? Yeah, but I just realized it's Sunday. Little sweets says head on home. Dr. Pepper's on its way. So sweet, unique. Baby, there's nothing better. I bet you've probably done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Did you invest your nest egg in an NFT? Yeah, and I don't even know what that is. It's a non-fungible token. Everyone's done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm a broken traffic light. Stop and go is the name of my game. It's easy. You go, they go. Or was it? They go, you go. (laughs) And if you have the wrong car insurance, these repair costs could stop you in your tracks. So get Allstate's new low auto rate and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Not available in every state, based on coverage and limits selected. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. In most states, prices vary based on how you buy. Allstate Bar and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. Back to Talking Cowboys. For all you Cowboys fans out there, come watch the Cowboys practice during training camp at the Star presented by American Airlines. There are open practices taking place for back-to-back nights at Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. Join us for Cowboys night on Tuesday, August 23rd, starting at 4 p.m. and open practice on Wednesday, the 24th at 6 p.m. For more information, visit the Star in Frisco. Dot com. Back here on Talking Cowboys, presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company, Mickey Spagnola, Rob Phillips. Gentlemen, I mean, it's very interesting. We're only in Oxnard for, what, three more days total? But we also still have two entire weeks of camp still remaining pretty much. Uh, Ma- yeah, uh, Chris says four. Four days. Four days in Oxnard. Sunday counts. Three. Yeah, it's three days, five days. Yeah. Okay, so five days-ish, and then we're – Outside of Oxnard for the rest of camp, and I mean we're That's going to Denver. traveling the country. That's yeah. kind of sad. Going to Denver tomorrow, and then we will be back here for just a couple of days, and then we go to LA for a significant amount of time. Costa Mesa, Costa Mesa, yeah. Uh, Chargers. Is That's where what the I was Chargers thinking. practice uh, area Charles is. Planes and automobiles. You gonna bike down there? That would be a nice bike ride. I'm right? sure it would be great. You but I think I'll, 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 I'll put my bike on the train. You'll okay. pop on the train. <laughs> <laughs> let it ride a little bit. Can, can I pedal? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the high in Denver on Thursday when the Cowboys yeah, practice with the Broncos, 97 degrees. Oh, that yeah. went up two look degrees. At the, look, at the, look at the humidity, too. Mm. It's pretty high. Oh, no. I don't have that. They oh, 41%. I told, I told one of the doctors, I said, you better have the IV tent ready to go. Yes. Yes, yes. Because they have not seen that heat since 
uh, July 24th. Yep. Yes, July 24th. So goodness, you know, and even even more so in in the practice because you're going to probably get a lot more reps because you're going up against another team. You're yep. not sitting there waiting, to, you know, for your turn. Uh, so yeah, they better be they better be ready because that that heat's going to hit. And it's not only the heat; it's the altitude too. Yep, y- you know, it is real. Um, <laughs> It's true. I know. It's just, Why are you laughing? <laughs> Mickey's really selling this for the Cowboys. What a great <laughs> trip this is going to be. This is going to be well, awesome. Well, it'll be, by God, it's good conditioning for these guys. So get them ready. <laughs> okay. So they, don't Coach have, Mick. so they don't have to drink pickle juice like they should have in Coach, that opener against Philadelphia uh, that year. Coach Spagnola on the scene. Uh, Rob, tell me about Jaron Curse. He, he missed practice yesterday, had a little bit of back tightness. Is that something long-term, something to worry about here if, if we're looking into the preseason? Um, I mean, he probably wouldn't play a significant amount of time in the preseason. Yeah, that's hard to see regardless. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, we'll see. I, I, it, I think at this time of camp, anytime when you've got a vet at this point with anything, they're going to they're gonna be smart. So. At this point, Mick, I think it's just hey, let's let's be careful here. If you got any type of tightness or some, feeling something, yeah, maybe chill it, out. Maybe it came from that block that uh, uh, Tyler Smith put on him on that screen <laughs> screen pass to Zeke on on Saturday. Mm. But yeah, I, I don't know. He seemed to be walking just fine. Yeah, he was out there. I, I just think they were being very cautious. Uh, but I'll tell you what it did. It, it gave Marquise Bell some reps with the first team defense. Uh, and I thought he took advantage of it. And, uh, you know, you, you got to kind of count your, your small victories. And he was like, man, I got a PBU on Dak Prescott. He yeah. broke up that pass. I think it was one of the tight ends. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, was on to Sean McCune. McEwen, right? Mm-hmm. And he got his hand in there. Uh, the, the kid is just a specimen. He yeah. has strong safety linebacker special teams written all over him. He, he was like 6'1", 2'4". 20s, 220, 5, right? something like that. Uh, they got him listed. No, I take it back. 6'2", 212. Oh. 212 looks light. And the guy runs a 4'4", 4, 4, 40. I mean, somewhere this kid's going to play. He's going to make this team. Yeah, and it, it just it's the deep draft that they had this year. I asked Will McClay about it yesterday. The writers got to sit down with him for a few minutes. And, uh, you know, it. This was just such an unusual draft with the extra COVID year and how many good prospects were out there. It's not normal for a Marquise Bell to be available in college free agency. It's just not. Correct. Um, and, and they feel good about some other guys. Dennis Houston's another young guy, wide receiver, that's jumped off the tape. And we'll see about there. But, I, I mean, I think Marquise Bell's got a spot on this team. Yeah. I would be surprised if he's not on the 53. That's the biggest thing for me is, is – it goes back to the crowded situation at defensive line and then the numbers that you're going to have to have later on from corner and special teams and things of the sort. I, I agree with you. I think he deserves a spot on this roster, and I think he will be on this roster. Yesterday was another way for him to say, I belong on this roster, because that's exactly yeah. what he did. He had a great practice, filled in for the significant amount of time. I actually wrote about it in the Battlegrounds that's on the website at the moment. But the, the way that he filled in for Curse. You wouldn't even you, you would just thought Kurt switched to Jersey. I mean, he filled in mm-hmm. exceptionally well. And for a guy who's a rookie who has similar skill set and through OTAs in minicamp, the biggest knock against his game was his side to side, his lateral ability, his change of direction. That's since looked like it's been vastly improved. Even just over the couple of months that he had in an off season, that's where he's been focusing his work on. And that lateral movement looks like it's completely going to complement the straight line speed that Mick was talking about on that 4440. If he can do those things, not only is he going to make the roster, there's a chance he's in the rotation. He plays a good number of snaps outside of Jalen and Curse and what Curse will do on the backside of that. Defense. And the other thing is, and I, I probably knew the answer to this question knowing what a you know what a great athlete he was sure. uh, at at Florida A and M. I said, so did you play any special teams in college? And he goes, not a snap. <laughs> and I said, well, I kind of figured that because you probably played 60 plays a game, right? Yeah. And he said, but here I'm on all four phases. And he said, I'll I'll <laughs> go play anywhere they tell me. And, and that's what you want to hear. Oh, for sure. Right? For sure. And, you know, Donovan Wilson, by the way, got some extra work too yep. in, with the first team with, with – uh, with J-Ron out, and, that, and that's good for him. But 
you talk about guys. J. Ron Curse is, is a special player because of his ability to play in space and and be kind of a matchup guy with the way offenses are nowadays. With with uh, you know, um, excuse me, Joe Witt talked about it the other day. The middle of the field is wide open now with the way offenses play tight ends. You got to have a matchup guy who can who can play multiple spots, kind of a Swiss Army knife on defense. J. Ron Curse is that, and you look at Marquise Bell fits that prototype. Yeah, you know, with his size and his range. He's got that going for him. So does Israel McQuamu. Like you, mm-hmm. you, all three guys, at different levels of their career, they're trying to develop that position. And I and I, I think all three have a great chance. Well, we know about Curse, and I think Bell and and McQuamu are going to be on this team too. What have you seen from McQuamu so far? Just kind of outline his camp. He's kind of had some ups and downs, but I, yesterday he was as vocal as, as I've ever seen him. It looks like the confidence is growing. I think uh, he has a better grasp of what they're asking him for, because if you remember, he was a corner. They corner moved to safety. South Carolina. Yeah. Flipped and, over. He's kind of played a little bit of both. He's playing in the slot yesterday. And I see that he seems to understand more what he's doing, and you see him around the ball yeah. a little more than you did last year as a, as a rookie. But, you know, they loved his size. That was that was mm-hmm. the key thing. Same thing with uh, Nashawn Wright, right? The, you know, big, long, rangy guy, and you're going to give him a chance. And if you're going to err, you're going to err on the developmental side of maybe we can bring this guy along because sure. he's got the physical traits that fits what I want to do at my defense uh, coming from uh, Dan Quinn. Rob? No, absolutely. I mean, I think he's – you're seeing a lot of young guys just seem more comfortable out there in year two, and it, guys at different positions. Simi Fajoko talked about this yesterday. He's just playing faster out here. Mm-hmm. He's got a better comfort level in this game. Robert Prince said he's got, you know, 4-3 four, four, speed. It's showing up. He's, he's taking on more responsibility as a blocker. He made some more plays out there in the passing game. I just think guys are more comfortable than they were last year. And, and I mean, look, we'll see if it translates to the games – but out here, you see a difference from last year. And actually, he's catching the ball, too. Yeah. Semi. Much better than he did last year. Had a great practice yesterday. And Noah that, that nine route he wrote, it, that nine route he ran uh, and, and caught a, the deep ball yep. over his head, like, that was big time. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I think he's coming along. So that's the thing. That's why it is so hard to judge this team because you've got guys coming that were just – guys last year right sure. now maybe they can be players and when you say well they lost this and this and this well you're saying well but we're adding this this and this and now will it compensate for you know because uh, defensively basically the only guy they lost was randy gregory yeah. right we mm-hmm. agree yeah the, the other guys they didn't want agreed you know keanu O'Neill. yeah um kz kz like big they, time contributors, they were d- they were done with those guys. Randy was the guy. So yeah. Randy was the guy. So if you can replace that with even a combination of guys, and they've got some candidates now, yep. we got to see how they play. This defense should take the next step. You have added Neville Gallimore, right? They didn't have him last year until yeah, the end of games. the season, yep. and only started four. I, mm-hmm. I believe it came out to correct. You've you've added Demarcus Lawrence. He he missed the whole middle part of the season. Uh, so those were additions you had to compensate for last year. And one of the reasons why Micah Parsons ended up getting as many snaps as he did as a true defensive end. So you've added that, and now you can play that five-man line with Parsons, lining them next to, to Marcus Lawrence if you want to. You can move to Marcus Lawrence inside. Um, so there's a, there's a variety of things they can do on, on defense including playing in the same system for the two years in a row, yep. which they really haven't done with the, with the same defensive coordinator calling the plays. Because if you remember, uh, Marinelli yep. handed off the play calling those last couple of years. So yep. I just think this defense, and it's not because of what they're doing out here. The defense is always ahead of the offense, right? The offense caught up yesterday. They, they burned them in the running game several times. Uh, but it, it's, it's, it's encouraging that that defense could be better than it was last year. And it looks like we're getting to the point where the offense is catching up yesterday, or today is the final day of the install period. But one guy who has not had to catch up because he's been ahead the entire camp has been C.D. Lamb. And that connection with Dak Prescott continues to shine. And yesterday I think it shined brighter than any. He had three touchdowns and three different drills, Rob. What did you see from C.D.? 
And how confident are you that not only can he be a number one receiver, because I think that's, that question's already been answered, but how good of a receiver could he be? What is his ceiling in the NFL? He's already a Pro Bowl receiver. I think people forget that. I think with the added responsibility, there's going to be more of, of a focus on him and there's more of a focus on things he doesn't do as well, mm-hmm. just like Trayvon Diggs. I mean, Trayvon Diggs makes a Pro Bowl, so now, hey, where is he deficient? You know, that, that just comes with it. But you're right. He had three touchdowns yesterday. And catch out training camp live because we had at least, at, one least, at least one of them. Yep. Uh, one was in a, a fourth and goal situation. One was in a one-on-one situation. And one was in the two-minute work. And not to me, it's not just what CD's doing. We saw CD do this in camp last year. We know he's special. We know he can – his, his, his uh, high point ability to go get the football – is really impressive. Dak is putting these balls only where he can get it. I yeah. mean, this was as accurate a, a practice as I've seen Dak have out here so far in camp. I think their overall connection together has been really good, and I think that's the most encouraging thing. But I, it, as much as CD is doing a good job getting separation and, and finishing plays, Dak is putting the ball where it needs to be. And they're moving him around. He's not just so – your number one receiver doesn't have to just play outside, right? He's in the slot uh, like he played a lot last year. I think the one, the the red zone touchdown that he caught down the seam, yep. I think he came out of the slot. Cause he did against Anthony Brown. I don't know who was supposed to cover him, but it, whatever he did, he was wide open. Yeah. And, uh, and, 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 yeah, Dak hit him with a perfect pass. So that's the good thing that – you know, if people say, oh, well, they'll just take him away. Well, if he's in the slot, let me know how you're going to take him away because you can't bump and run him in the slot, which is another thing. By the way, when they do these drills out here, the one-on-one pass drills, the cornerback's not bumping and running. They're playing like five yards off, off. the line of scrimmage They because yep. that's one of the rules, right? And even in OTAs and mini camps, they're not allowed to get on the line of scrimmage and check the wide receiver and make him fight to get off. So uh, it's toxic out there. <laughs> Ooh, how about do you, that? Do you agree with that I about love Twitter? That. I love that so much. Yeah, I thought it was awesome. Honestly, I'm not going to lie. All right, when we come back here on Talking Cowboys, we wrap things up with a little bit of running back talk. What are the expectations for Ezekiel Elliott and who could be the star of the preseason games coming up in Denver and L.A.? With more Talking Cowboys on the other side of the break. Did you get to work on time? Yeah, but I just realized it's Sunday. Lil' Sweet says head on home. Dr. Pepper's on its way. So sweet, unique. Baby, there's nothing better. I bet you've probably done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Did you invest your nest egg in an NFT? Yeah, and I don't even know what that is. It's a non-fungible token. Everyone wants on something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savanna. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now, Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is, Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Back to Talking Cowboys. Uh, too bad Isaiah's not here for this one. But are you a Cowboys fan who spices up the game? Nominate yourself or a friend for the Cowboys Fan of the Year, presented by 
Captain Morgan <laughs> and win a trip to Super Bowl 57 in Arizona. Nominate today at DallasCowboys.com slash fan of the year. We're running out of days, Mick. We're running out of days for this picture. Do I need to put my foot up on a stool yes. or something? Yes, you do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Let's do this before practice. I don't know that that's going to happen. What? What if you do it in Denver? <laughs> in Denver. Sure. You'll, me, you'll be like a mile high. Get me a mile you'll be, high. Right? And you'll be Captain Morgan. <laughs> You're spicing it up a mile high. How about that? Oh, spice it. <laughs> spicing it up. Mickey Spagnola, Rob Phillips, Kyle Yeomans, Chris Beam here with you for Talking Cowboys here on this Tuesday. Again, the Cowboys traveling to Denver. It is a travel day tomorrow. And then they will practice against the Broncos on Thursday, off day on Friday, Saturday, the first preseason game of 2022 and usually rob there's a couple guys that shine during the preseason a couple rookies or younger guys maybe second third year guys mm. that get their opportunity and then ultimately become a fan favorite throughout the preseason who could that be in the running back room this year Ooh, because it's not going to be ezekiel elliott there's a very good chance it's not tony pollard either both of those guys if they see any action it's going to be limited and it's going to be with 20 on the field and not 21 yeah where could you see some of these running backs who are either undrafted guys, returners, a couple different names in there? Who could you see shining? I think Malik Davis is going to lead this team in rushing in the preseason. Wow. The rookie out of Florida. He's been good out here. He's mm -hmm. been productive as, as a runner, as a catcher. Um, he'll probably get the most touches. He, he's gonna, too. And most importantly, Mick, he's going <laughs> to get the most opportunities. Because you're right. Like I think Zeke's preseason, most likely, Kyle, it's going to be. He ain't touching the ball. It's, it's no. going to be this week in Denver in practice and then against the Chargers in practice. Um, maybe the same for Pollard. I don't know how much Tony's going to get work in preseason, maybe a little bit. Um, and, and, you know, and they've had some guys out. You know, Rico Dattle's been out. Aaron Shamklin's been out, you know, they've with the COVID stuff. So, um, and Rico is going to have a role on this team. So I, I don't know how many carries he's going to get necessarily over the course of three preseason And he's games. not going to get any this week because he's missed all this time with COVID. Exactly. So give me Malik Davis. Mm, if, yeah, if you're putting me down on a parlay, yeah, it's a good <laughs> not real. But, yeah, yeah, I'll take Malik Davis. And, he's, and, and, and you know, we're laugh, if I was and I'm not. We're laughing, but but, he, but he's, he's been productive out there when, he, when sure. he's got opportunities. Yeah. Uh, now, again, he's rushing against probably the third-team defense, but – uh, at least he's looked good, so I would imagine we'll see a lot of him. Yeah. He's one of those bowling ball type of running backs who bounces off of guys. He's not necessarily a quick, shifty runner. He's more of a guy who's going to invite contact more than avoid it. Yeah. Um, and, and so it's it's honestly a good comp to a, a younger Zeke, but not, of course, to the same level as Zeke was even back in his early days. But for a guy – like Davis, who was the starter on his team, yet he didn't even lead his own collegiate team in Florida in rushing. He didn't. So he had a guy, Damian Pierce, that led the team in rushing, who was technically his backup on the depth chart. Right. I, I could see that happening. I think Rico Dowdle, like you, you mentioned, is going to have a role. Skip Pete talked about it yesterday, or excuse me, two days ago about how the third running back, whoever is that third running back, is going to play a massive role on this offense moving forward because there's so many opportunities to see Tony Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott on the field at the same time. How much does that play into the factor, Mick, and, and who you play in the preseason? Because if Rico Dowdle is undoubtedly the third running back, which I think on the depth chart he would be, it, does that mean that you even dial his snaps back in the preseason? I doubt it. I bet he gets opportunities. Uh, they got to make sure. Just outside of his you gotta, sickness. You got to make sure. Yeah, if he yeah. once he gets cleared. And, sure. Um, he was one of the guys out there yesterday, still had his mask on, so that doesn't yeah. bode well for getting back out on the field. And, you know, what kind of conditioning did he lose in these last five days, six <laughs> days that he's missed? <laughs> you right? just mentioned the altitude in Denver, yeah, too. Yeah, and then the altitude. Um, and so, coming off COVID, that uh, might be a challenge. I, we'll put they, I bet they put a cape on him. Well, they won't need a cape. It won't be cold in Denver. A cape. To say. I don't you think, know how they wear the I don't think we're going to get into yeah, those. <laughs> yeah, they do that in Green Bay. Like when you go to Green Bay and, <laughs> yeah, and, right. and the Giants, right? Not, not Denver in August. Uh, so <laughs> – I, I think once he's ready to go, they use him and and, and, and maybe even uh, use him up. And I don't know how many times we're going to see Zeke and Tony Pollard on the field at the same time. We, we get to see it sporadically out here practicing a play uh, just to see what they think of it, right? Um, 
but I don't know that you'll get a steady diet, and I don't think we'll get a steady diet of the pitch going to Pollard with mm-hmm. Zeke being the leading fullback. Okay, blocking, yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. Happened a couple times. Yeah. That's and, not, and, and that's good. You show that because <laughs> now the other team during the week's got to practice that, right? Sure. they got to spend time on a play that you might use once out of 70 snaps. These seagulls eat good out here, don't they? They do. My God. And they get There's fed. one on the top of our tent right now that looks like a, I don't know, like, a, really? like a small dog. And they get fed well, too. <laughs> yeah, And they're do. not afraid of human dog. beings either, by the way. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you bristle at any notion that Zeke is going to give up carries. You hate that talk. Yes, he should get all he can get. Do you see him running out there? Yeah, I we do. do. He's yeah. breaking people's ankles with the cuts he's making. He looks you good. also okay. I want to outline this too because I'm actually I'm genuinely curious about this. Is he breaking people's ankles? He does get, look good, so I'm not disagreeing with you. However, everybody that's coming up to make a tackle, quote unquote, is slowing down because they're not finishing through. They're, well, why are they? Why are, why are they getting tripped like on their own because he breaks and they're not there? Do you think these guys want to tackle Zeke? I heard somebody Absolutely talking about I, – I heard somebody saying the other day that he was coming around a corner and out of the blind side was Trayvon Diggs and he would have just wiped out Zeke. And I said to myself, really? Number one, would he have wanted to if he had to make the tackle? And number two, was he capable of making the tackle when that guy's at full speed? Mm. He'll truck you. Yeah. yeah. And so – That's my thing is he's at full speed. That's what I'm looking at. But in terms of the side to side and the the jumping around and his his putting the foot in the ground and like You're elevating, you're gonna have off to wait field. till September 11th to find out. Exactly. Kyle Moore wants more TP. I know he I, does. I like TP. And that's TP. fine. It's great. I do too. But, but more you get, you might get less. I don't think. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't think TP and Zeke like can't coexist. I think no, they, they have. Coexist they have for offense. how many and years? that's what makes this offense better is when yeah. they do coexist. Because you get a change-up. You get used to one guy running at one speed, and all of a sudden the other guy's exploding on you, and you're sure. going, whoa, no, what happened, right? That's the beauty of this whole thing. It's worth. It, Kyle's right, though. It's worth noting that in the first month of the season, it wasn't 50-50, but it was, it was inching up towards that, a true – I'm not saying he's not the starter and not the featured back, but Mike McCarthy stood up here last year and said, we're going to manage Zeke throughout the season to make sure he, we expect to be in the playoffs and we're going to get him ready for January. So they're not going to put 300-plus carries on him. Yeah. So that to me, it's more about he's our guy, but we're going to make sure he makes it through the entire season. And not only that, it's fresh for January. Yeah, and we'll, so, we'll so, see how the games are going. And sometimes the games itself, when you have blowouts, it obviously makes it more opportunities for, for Tony Pollard. But I think there's, there's just – there is room for both guys. And Fourth and, quarter, close game, you're nursing a three-point lead. Who's, 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 I, who are you handing the ball I to? I got Zeke to salt away games. Okay. Absolutely. But, but, but there's other things you, you can do with Tony Pollard, I especially understand. when you have as many questions about the receiving position. But right have we seen him do. line up yet in the slot? No, but you can take Tony? Him. Yes. Yeah, we have. Yeah, he's been in there. I, uh, motioning out of the backfield, and he goes out when no, they go empty? he's lined up in the slot He's done a little of that and stuff. And they've but thrown him the ball? Mm, no. I can't remember. He's, yeah, probably he's not. been involved in the pass game a little bit. I mean, I – this is fourth year. This is what he did in college. Like, I know. He can do it. They just don't use him that way I for know. whatever reason. Well, So, I, you know, I, I think it's time to maybe look at that a little bit more, especially if you've got the questions that you have right now at the receiving position. I'm not saying line him up out wide all the time, mm-hmm. but a space player, that's what they view him as. That's why they, they brought in Kevontae Turpin. They think he can do the same thing, find ways to get him the ball in space. You got a problem with him continuing to return kickoffs? Pollard? Um, yes. No. No. Especially if if his role isn't drastically reduced, go. Or, uh, not That's the another way to reduced. get the ball Upgrade. in his hands, right? Yeah, for sure. He had a hundred yard kick return last year. I'm absolutely cool with him returning kicks. Punts are different. Punts are yes, different. Yes, but he he doesn't catch the ball well. Exactly on the punts, he can totally he, catch kickoff. He's sort of. All I asked over the I place. asked him in OTAs what he said. You know, that's maybe an option. And I said, what's the difference? And he said, it's just tracking the ball. It's just yeah. completely different than yep. it is in the kick return. And they got two guys out here that can track the ball like they're playing center field. Turpin and Tolbert look effortless when they're finding and, the and ball off And then if they the don't work out, CD can do it. Oh, gosh. What? You're behind. They're kicking from the 10-yard line. I agree in And, and if Turpin's situations. not on the field and he's going to catch – CD's going to catch the ball to 50, 
I'm putting him out there. I need CD catching 1,600 yards of. Well, that's fine. Yeah, but it's... I could use him out there in certain situations. I, I don't love it either, Kyle. But he only had 12 returns last year. Yeah, it wasn't. And now it, right. it only it only takes one play. But but it's not like he was out there a ton. Well, so. okay. So Deion Sanders, greatest cornerback in on earth. Yeah. He returned punts. They weren't worried about him getting hurt. Yeah. yeah. So get the ball in his hands. By the way, you mentioned Turpin. The head coach was pretty high on him yesterday, we wasn't got, he? We got like eight questions to Mike McCarthy right? about Turpin. And he answered them all. Yeah, yeah. And, they like him. And uh, was very positive about it. And I think, you know, everybody's worried about, well, does he play special teams? Yeah, he plays special teams. He returns <laughs> punts. I will say, Mick, your, your point on Deion Sanders, I looked this up the other day, so I wanted to get the exact number. He returned 140 kick returns in his first four years. After that, the remainder of his career, he had 15. The wow. The entire rest of his career. But they, but they used him in certain situations. And part of that problem the rest of his year, he spent two years playing wide receiver and cornerback. They did this years ago, Kyle, with um, Patrick Creighton was the featured punt returner yep. 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. If they had field to work with, Terrence Newman, who was their Pro Bowl starting cornerback, would go back there. You know, and so yeah, I mean, it maybe happens. you could see that with CD a little bit, but uh, that's how I, they uh, use Dez too, right? Every once in a while, they would put him back there early. Too, and Dez wanted to do it so bad, <laughs> they, then they wouldn't let him do it. <laughs> actually, I don't know. Let him. I don't actually, know if CD wants that same because I, I don't. I think they know how they knew how physical Dez was, and they yeah. knew Dez wouldn't just just okay. Let's just get to the next play. He he would fight for every yeah, yard. Well, I think they worried himself. about Dez making a good decision. Do I catch it or, <laughs> or fair catch it. it or just let it bounce? Yeah. Right. Yep. Couple Fielded things. at the one. That's that's <laughs> that's part of the punt return thing, right? Yeah, you got to be sure. a good decision maker. Yeah. Lots of special teams talk unintentionally today. I mean, we got, got the kickers, we got the returners. We even talked about Marquise Bell for a little bit and talking about what he could bring on special teams. I mean, lots of special teams talk, but. Hey, it's the big third phase of the game. We're right here. <laughs> <laughs> There's three phases for That's all of right. you at Don't home. Don't you forget that. Got to gotta remember it. All right, everybody, we will be back soon enough. I'm not exactly sure whether or not we will be in Denver, but if not, we'll be back with you next week here in Oxnard. More Talking Cowboys presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company is on the way soon. For Chris Beam, Rob Phillips, Mickey Spagnola, I'm Kyle Yeomans. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon on Talking Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!